Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen, and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table, Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the nether world, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of, my, of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great cast is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that they might warm them lest they to come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a very powerful parable that our Lord Jesus Christ addressed to us. Something very important to say is from this to men, one has a name and the other we do not know what was his name. One was named Lazarus, which means God is my rock, God is my help. That's the meaning of Lazarus. But the other one, we know that he was a wealthy man, a rich man, but we do not know what was his name. And the reason is because all those who turn their back to God have no future have no eternal life. That's the reason why we don't know what was the name of this rich man. And obviously this parable reminds us the existence of heaven and the existence of hell. It's our Lord Jesus Christ himself who tells us that. Important to say that People in the Old Testament, they didn't say heaven. They say the bosom of Abraham because they consider Abraham as the greatest of the prophets and they were convinced that Abraham was with God, in the presence of God. So to say the bosom of Abraham, they say to be in the presence of God, to be in heaven. But the teaching of this parable is quite simple and clear. 
God wants all of us to practice charity and mercy. All that we have is a blessing from God. We need to see all our possessions and all that we have as a blessing from God. And being Catholic means a lot. Among those things means to practice charity every day, to practice mercy. Otherwise, we cannot say that we are real Catholics. And also, this man, he spent his life in the middle of distractions. And this is something very important. Sometimes we are too busy to worry about many things that we forget about the most important. What is the most important? Maybe all of us like investing, right? But not all investments are material. Our life is a time of preparation, as we all know, to invest from heaven. And while we spend our lives doing so many things, we should also invest our time for heaven. Because this parable reminds us that all that is material will remain here. That we will die and we will not be able to take our material possessions with us. But we can take with us all our spiritual investments. All that we do for others. That's what we can take with us. And this is something that many times we forget to do. So how is my charity to others? How is my mercy to others? We know that there is a lot of poverty in this world and that all of us, since our possibilities, can do something from the others. And when we practice charity, when we are these channels of mercy to others, then our Catholicism will not be empty or boring because we can say, well, I came to Mass on Sunday, I pray, and I am committed to my faith. That's part of that. That's the theory, but also we need the practice. And why it's very important to practice charity and mercy, because if we do not do that, we can fall into the sin of greediness and selfishness that was the big sins of this rich man. Since he forgot about practice, charity, and mercy, he became very greedy and selfish. And believe me, that happens when we don't do anything from the others. There are people who have the custom to do something every day. Every day they say, Today, I, what was my work of mercy today? And there are people who every single day invest from heaven. And again, they have a name. And those who turn their back to God, they don't have a name. And practice charities has a consequence. Forgetting about practicing charity and mercy also has consequences as this rich man had. So let us pray every day to God to let us see very clearly how we can practice charity and mercy in our daily lives so that we can see and find that faith in Catholicism is not boring and empty. It's about practicing. It's about action.